seconds of the fall eruption near the Napao crater of Kalauea volcano on the big island of Hawaii. When eruption began, it was a dark and stormy night. So dark that when we had conflicting geophysical data, tremors, and increased infrasound, but no change in slope, our webcams were no help. Bad weather prevented the cameras from seeing anything, and southerly winds on that rainy night also prevented the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory Gas Monitoring Station from detecting any gas releases from the eruption. However, several Hawaiian Volcano Observatory staff who live in the area reported smelling only a burning odor, no sulfur. Their gas badges, which are used for situational awareness and safety, not precise volcanic gas measurements, did not register sulfur dioxide above background levels. Often, winds blowing from the East Rift Zone toward the volcano can carry residual hydrogen sulfide from the dormant Puwoo area, and hydrogen sulfide can be especially common during the rainy season as well as on dark, stormy nights. Members of the Kilauea community, less than two miles away from one side of the volcano, reported smells of sulfur and burning on social media. Even with community reports of sulfur odors, we cannot be absolutely certain that an eruption has occurred. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory confirmed that a small fissure eruption occurred west of Puuo. We are no longer limited to people's noses to indicate whether an eruption is underway. The sulfur dioxide emission rate was measured at only about 300 tons per day, which is consistent with no eruptive activity. It appeared that the eruption may have ended, but by morning, the eruption was back in full force and sulfur dioxide emissions increased to nearly 12,000 tons per day. The wind had also shifted to the right direction from the north so that one of our East Rift Zone gas monitoring stations could detect the odor of sulfur dioxide as well. Emissions then dropped to about 3,500 tons per day that afternoon as the lava flow weakened. Emissions were similar, about 2,000 tons per day. Scientists at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory measured the plume with an ultraviolet camera that can see sulfur dioxide as the imagery began to show more intense plumes. The gas scientists noticed the change at that point and switched back to the more reliable ultraviolet spectrometer measurements, which revealed a progressive increase in the sulfur dioxide emission rate throughout the afternoon. In conjunction with the opening of new vents and the development of a fast-flowing lava waterfall on the rim of Nepal crater, Emissions increased from 5,000 tons per day around 3.30 p.m. to about 12,000 tons per day by 5 p.m. when it was too late to continue ultraviolet-based measurements. With the vents and lava flows still strong, sulfur dioxide emissions reached about 30,000 tons per day by the morning. Gas scientists at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory were able to measure the gas from the latest lava eruption that morning using an infrared spectrometer, which measures the chemistry of erupted gas. The 
The gas was low in carbon dioxide and therefore came from magma that had previously lost carbon dioxide while in the shallow magma plumbing system before the eruption. This is very similar to other eruptions on Kilauea East Rift Zone and recent Kilauea Summit eruptions.